I am Ashley Johnston. I am a certified life coach and international speaker, and I am here with the Life Coach University offering today a pay it forward talk. And all we ask is when you come to these pay it forward talks is that you pay it forward. We do all of these for free. All of the coaches on this platform, amazing coaches offer all of their coaching tools, their content, their life experience to you for free. So we encourage you to turn around and offer something to the world, to people that you know and care about or strangers, something good to pay it forward. Okay. So my topic today is about addressing times in our lives when we, how to care for ourselves during difficult seasons, or I'm going to call them high need seasons. So something is happening in your life in which there is a high need for your attention. So some examples could be the birth of, of a child, the death of a family member or friend. It could be a surgery for you or your child, which is the, the situation that I am currently in that I'll be referencing. Um, or really anything else in your life where there is a, a season of time where you are needing to have all hands on deck and there's a lot going on and it's easy to get overwhelmed and feel depleted. So today I'm going to talk about what are some tools that we can use in order to help maintain a level of self-care during this time to help you show up the best that you can. And most of the time that I have experienced showing up during this kind of a season isn't like isn't necessarily one that you're like, this is my best that I can ever offer, but it is something that is sustainable. So that's what we're really going for during this kind of a season is what is just, what is something that's sustainable um, so that when I get on the other side of this, I'm not completely trashed or completely depleted or, or I have declined in my mental and physical health, right? We're just kind of holding that line. So what I am experiencing right now is the surgery of one of my children. She had a foot surgery and in that foot surgery, um, she's in casts for six weeks. So we had a week, um, sorry, we had a month of serial casting, prepping up to the surgery, had the surgery and now post-surgery, we have six weeks in casts and a wheelchair and it's really kind of shaken our normal red, like our normal daily schedule, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, one second. I forgot to turn off my little heater there. It's still cold where I am. Um, so some of the first things that I want to talk about have to do more with the mental side of things in your mental health. So the first thing that you really want to try to adapt during a season like this is a kind self narrative. And I'm not necessarily talking about the kind of narrative that like, you don't need to do this. This is, um, you just take it easy. You don't need to do the work. It's, it's so hard. You deserve the rest. Cause usually during a season like this rest, meaning just being able to sit down and watch a movie or, um, read a book isn't usually what this time or this season calls for. Now, your season may be different than mine. Your situation will probably be different than mine. So you can determine whether that is appropriate for that. But for me in my season right now, that's not quite what I mean about a kind self-narrative. What I mean about a kind self-narrative is, is something that sounds like you can handle this. We can do this. Just take it, take it easy on yourself emotionally. So it's not, I'm not enough. I'm not doing it right. So for example, my house is quite a mess. I've come into this room. This is our guest room because it's the cleanest room in the house right now. And letting that be because really at a time like this, you need to be able to prioritize the things that are most important for you. So for me, it looks like making sure my daughter has good pain management, making sure that we are, we're getting enough food and water in her, making sure that she's getting sun, making sure that she's getting good quality sleep. And the same for other people in my house after that. Are we getting good sleep? Are we getting good food? Are we getting um, the rest that we need? 
The things that fall to the wayside are some other things, such as other appointments that I've canceled um, ahead of time, um, my house being very clean, attending certain appointments or um, gatherings, moving my schedule around to allow space for healing, right? And that is um, reprioritizing what matters during this season. So when I walk around the house and I see that it's messy, it's like, it's okay. We're prioritizing something else right now, right? And that is what that self-care sounds like, that kind narrative can sound like. So as you look at your own life and your own situation, look at the things that you can prioritize that will help you and support you through the season that you're in and let the other things fall to the wayside for a while. If you can, and if you can't, see if it's something that can be delegated or that you can hire out or something like that. Um, this is what can help preserve. And what I really, really love about coaching is that is what make this is what it's a different kind of self care that allows for you to have emotional and mental longevity in a trying or a high need season. So my high need season right now is looking like a quarter of a year. So about three months. So I'm trying to be very strategic in how I'm approaching this and a kind self narrative knowing I'm not a superhuman and that's okay. Also, I need to prep for myself. That's okay. I need to get rest and it's okay to not prioritize the clean house, the lawn, the car, um, and different things like that. Okay. So the next thing during a high need season, the likelihood that you're going to experience big emotions, right? And that's how we say it to our, to our little kids. You're experiencing a big emotions. Well, turns out even when you're big and grown up, you still experience big emotions. So during a high need season, when you experience those big emotions, something that will be most useful to you is to allow a space for those big emotions to exist. So what I mean is if you are, have you just had a baby and you're postpartum and you are emotionally high and low, then you, you want to create a space where that's okay. It's, oh, I'm feeling this. I'm going to ride this wave. I'm going to cry for a little while. Right. And that has happened during the prep up to this surgery for my daughter, where it was just like, I'm feeling really overwhelmed. I could feel the emotions coming up. And so I just turned on some sad music or music that I felt really helped me emote. <laughs> and I cried and I cried very hard and I just let it, let it come and let it come. And I just let whatever I was thinking come, just let it flow. It's a bit like riding the waves in the ocean. You just ride it and they always subside. The ocean will, the wave will come in and the wave will go out. And that happens with our emotions too. And so there doesn't, you can create a space where there's no judgment. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean you made a mistake. It doesn't mean that you're not doing it right or anything like that. It's just, I'm a human, I'm feeling overwhelmed. And instead of putting it down, which actually really stops us up, it doesn't allow us to function very well. Instead of pushing it down, let it come up and it can be the crying it, or if it's like, I need to go for a run, I need to do something physically intense, which can help process emotions as well. Do that thing, let it come up and then it will wave back down and then you can keep going on. And so during a high need season, you might find that you're doing that more often and that is normal and that's okay. And it's much better for just to let it happen, create a space where that happens. You can go in your room, go in your closet. If you want to be alone, I prefer being alone. Um, but if you prefer being with someone, just let them know what's going on. Say, hold me, hug me. I'm going to cry this out. I'm going to, you know, whatever it is, I need to vent for a minute and then let it go. And then you can keep moving on. And because what you want to try to do in a season like this is to let go of as much emotional baggage as possible. And by emotional baggage, I'm not talking about like your childhood or any like trauma that's happened there, but I just mean any buildup from the intensity of the season. You let it build up, you let it go. Just let it go. You don't have to carry all of that weight. Okay. And that's what allows you to keep going for a longer period of time if you need to. Okay. 
All right. So some of these next things that I want to share are more, I would say, strategies that you can utilize when you are in a high need season. And the first thing is to tap into your community. You are not a superior being if you can do it by yourself, right? And I don't know about other countries, but I know that in America, it is for some reason, it's like it's in the air that if you can do it alone, stand alone, do it alone, you're tougher for it. And I can tell you that there's nothing really emotionally or mentally, like there's nothing really superior about doing it on your own. And I can tell you in the seasons where I've tried to do it on my own, I end up accumulating more damage, if you want to call it damage, but I end up accumulating more difficult things and more damage to my mental health and my physical health and my sleep and all of it when I try to do it alone. So you tap into your community. So before I was going into surgery with my daughter, I was letting people know. I let my family know. I let members of my community know, members of my church know, hey, we're prepping for surgery right now. And um, and they would often, they'd ask about it and we would talk about it. And then when the time came and they knew, oh, this is the day they're going into surgery, um, many people in my community and in my church and family members were like, hey, let's bring you food. We're going to bring you food for that first week. And is there anything else you need? I had some friends come over just to hang out with me. And so that first week, I was really trying to be diligent on making sure that we had a good support system as we came home. And, uh, and as the weeks have gone on, I've been able to ask, asset, um, assess yes, assess what it is that we might need from here on out. So because it's not so intense, her pain has subsided. We're kind of getting into a little bit more of a rhythm. And so it's like, okay, like mom has taken a lot of weight. Now I'm planning more outings in this coming week and coming up. It's like, okay, now I'm going to go out and be in my community. I'm going to go out and be um, alone for a little while and planning these little respite trips, just a couple hours here and there to ensure that I can still maintain my mental and emotional and physical wellness throughout this season. So I can show up for my daughter the way that I want to show up for her. So really dig into your community. And if you feel that you are lacking a community, I want to offer that if you're willing to put the word out there and you're willing to receive whatever is offered, and experience grateful thinking about whatever is offered, that you will find support. It is it is everywhere. And that thought process for me, support is everywhere for me. Even if there's not a person, I go out in nature and I feel supported out there. I feel the fresh air. I feel the peace. I feel strength. And even from the sun and um, there's a rejuvenation that can happen there. So there is support everywhere. And I think that thinking helps to open it up and helps you to see where you might be able to find it. If you feel like this is a really difficult concept or, or you're looking to build up your community, you can email me at ashleyjohnstoncoaching at gmail.com. That's A-S-H-L-E-I-G-H johnstoncoaching at gmail.com. And we can have a conversation about it for free and we can talk about what are some things that can be done or just talk about where you're at in your particular situation in your community building. Okay, so the next thing is to surround yourself when you're prepping for the season or if you find that you're in a high need season um, just randomly, then what you can do is that you can start surrounding yourself with supports. And I just mean, this is just for you. And these things can look very, very simple, like deep breathing, getting out in the sun or sitting in the sun. I like to find in the afternoons, a very comfortable place where the sun shines in my window. And I just sit in that patch of sunshine with my daughter, with my son, and we just soak it in. We soak in the warmth and the rays, and it's so calming. I also have surrounded myself with calming smells, different flowers, different oils, these things that help me calm down on a physical level. Um, I've surrounded myself with friends, 
with games, lots of music and dancing. And really, this kind of support is something that helps you feel lighter. So funny movies or jokes or um, things that can help that the, the thinking become lighter. Right. That's the goal. Like, let's let's lighten it up again, because you notice I've noticed when people lighten their thinking, not meaning let's let's be frivolous and let's not take serious what needs to be serious. But when we can find lightness in life and humor, it tends to be a huge load off and allows you to deal with anything else that's heavy or draining or depleting of your energies. So that's what I mean by surround yourself with a lot of support. This just you. Okay. All right. So embrace fatigue. So during a high need season, almost inevitably, you're going to feel exhausted and tired or fatigued or depleted on some sort of level, emotionally, physically, mentally. And what I have learned to be the most useful, because listen, if you have a brand new baby, you're just not going to be sleeping as much as you would if you didn't have that newborn baby, but you wanted that newborn baby. That's why you have that newborn baby most likely. And so you're not going to be getting a lot of sleep. So instead of fighting it in your head, fighting it, meaning, ah, oh, this is awful. This is so unfair. This is not right. I'm so angry. Why can't this baby just sleep? Why can't I just sleep? Instead, I want to offer that you can go, I'm going to be tired and that's okay. I'm going to be tired. I remember with my first baby, this was like, I can't do this. I'm not going to sleep a lot. Ah, this is so frustrating. I was so, I was angry all the time in the evening. And then with my second baby, it was like, you know what? I am going to pick a show or a book. And I just know that I'm not going to be sleeping a lot during this season. And that's okay. And this has happened again with the surgery with my daughter. We have gone back to not sleeping because she was so uncomfortable and she needed me up during the night and I was uncomfortable. And it took me a couple of days before I was like, ah, this is a newborn sleeping season again. And once I was able to get into that and to realize I'm going to feel tired and it's okay. So I'm just going to do everything tired. And so that's how it was for the first couple of weeks. It was just feeling tired, feeling a little depleted. And I can tell you that even though the tiredness didn't go away, getting rid of the awful narrative about being tired made being tired so much easier. And that two weeks passed by much nicer than it would have if I had kept fighting it in my head mentally. All right. So the next thing is you want to schedule in breaks, right? Sometimes we take the approach of, I just have to go, go, go and get everything done. And if I get everything done, then I if I accomplish everything on my list, then I can have a break. If I meet all of my child's needs first, then I can have a break. And I want to offer that you do it differently, that you go, I am going to schedule a break. Now, if your child cannot be alone, then find someone to be with them while you take your break. But schedule the breaks first. Schedule them in increments where you know you're going to need it. And even if that time comes, and you're like, oh, I don't feel like I need to go out. I don't feel like I need the break. I don't feel, I'm, I'm feeling fine. Take it anyway. Take it anyway. Because it's more about the maintenance of your emotional and mental well-being and physical well-being than it is about waiting until you're desperate for a break and then not having the mental capacity to do what needs to be done to take it. So schedule it, take it. And you can also make sure that the other people are taken care of that need to be taken care of before you head on out. But take the breaks and do it intentionally and schedule them as frequently as you feel you need it. Okay. And they don't have to be long, right? It's not about necessarily quantity, but quality. It's not about length of time, but the quality of the time, right? It's amazing how much can happen. Now, on this note of a break, a break a change is as good as a break. So if you find that you can't actually get a break away, then you can just change up a little bit of what you're doing at home. So if you have been, we've been spending a lot of time inside with the, um, with the cast and the wheelchair and it was getting a little stuffy, a little cabin fever. So 
I wasn't able to get out. My husband was still working. But what I did do is change it up and we just went outside. We just went outside and took her outside, went out on the the carport, took a little snack out there, took some water out there. And that was just as good as a break. A change can be just as good as a break. So if you can't get the breaks that you need, work in some things that shake it up a little bit. Okay. All right. And the last thing which I did say a little bit allude to before is maintain a sense of humor through a season, um, a high need season. A sense of humor can lighten the emotional load like nothing else I have ever found. So, okay, those are the tips that I have for you today if you're going through a high need season. And listen, you don't have to do it alone, right? You can pull from your community. And I want you to be able to consider that I am part of your community. The coaches here at Life Coach University are part of your community. We offer our services for free, which is absolutely amazing. So feel free to reach out to me at ashleyjohnstoncoaching.com at gmail.com or any of the other coaches on this platform. I know any of us would be willing to help support you in your high need season. So again, this is a PIF talk or a pay it forward talk hosted by the Life Coach University. What we ask is that you share and pay it forward with kindness, goodness, service, sending this video to someone or anything else that comes from the goodness in your heart. So grateful that you're here today. If you have comments or questions, please email me and we can have a great conversation. So until next time, take care.